If you've ever seen an action movie, played a first person shooter, or are just a fan of guns in general, there's a good chance you've seen a firearm designed by Fabrique Nationale. But who is Fabrique Nationale, and how have their designs achieved such popularity? Let's dive into their origins and take a look at the important moments that shaped this legendary brand's history. FN traces its lineage to the Belgian town of Liege, when in 1866, Henry Piper would establish his firearm business and scenes establishments paper. Soon after, Henry purchased a factory that produced barrels in the town of Nessonvaux. This turned out to be a great decision for Henry as it led to rapid growth to his business due to providing impeccable quality barrels for reasonable prices. For the next couple of decades, Henry and his company continued to gain notoriety and respect from enthusiasts and other firearm manufacturers alike. Even some Remington models from this time have barrels from Henry's company. In the 1880s, the Belgian army looked to modernize their arsenal and set about a search for a new service rifle by way of international trials. Many notable manufacturers competed for the military contract. Among them were the Nagant brothers, Ferdinand Mannlicher, Henry himself, as well as Paul Mauser. In 1889, many prominent manufacturers from the Liege region, including Henry, banded together to form Fabrique Nationale des Armes de Guerre in the town of Herstal. Henry was a primary shareholder in this new company, and together, alongside his fellow manufacturers, competed for the Belgian contract. Ultimately, it was the German Paul Mauser's design that was chosen by the Belgian government. He agreed to have his model be produced in Belgium, and also sold the manufacturing license to the Belgian government. In turn, Belgium contracted FN to manufacture 150,000 rifles of Mauser's design. FN spared no expense when it came to production of these rifles and built new factories, hired a formidable workforce, purchased durable materials, and bought modern machinery and equipment. As the foundation of the company was still being erected, the first batch of rifles, known as the Mauser Model 1889, would be completed in 1891. These rifles would continue to be produced for many decades and would see action in some of the most important conflicts in history, including the Spanish-American War, the Turkish War of Independence, and most notably in World War I and World War II. The successful production of the Mauser Model 1889 contract gave FN ambition to research and develop new products. A chance encounter with a legendary inventor would forever transform FN from a contractor into a major player that would forever revolutionize the world's firearm market. Piggybacking off the success of their fulfillment of the Model 1889 rifles, FN would receive contracts from foreign governments to manufacture more firearms and ammunition. However, in 1894, Mauser sued FN for infringing upon a patent over the Spanish Mauser model. FN would ultimately lose in litigation and could no longer produce the model. As a result, many key executives resigned and a majority portion of the company ended up in the hands of Mauser's parent company, Ludwig Lowe. Ludwig Lowe would redirect any small arm contract away from FN to its German factories in Berlin and Oberndorf because it did not want to compete with the Belgians. FN realized that almost their entire business had come to a screeching halt and if they didn't find a way to generate money, the factory and Fabrique Nationale would cease to exist. So FN turned their attention to manufacturing bicycles. They were innovative in their designs and were able to meet the rising demand of the time. They invented a chainless design and included a regular chain model in their lineup as well. Overall, the bicycle portion of FN's business was quite popular and they remained in production for over the next 30 years. In 1897, FN sent their sales manager of external affairs, Hart Berg, to Hartford, Connecticut in America to gather any information on advances in bicycle technology. It's during this famous trip that Hart would meet John Browning, who himself had traveled to Hartford to meet with the Colt manufacturing offices. Up to that point, John Browning was already a successful and reputable firearm designer. Browning was known to create innovative designs, so much so that the Winchester Repeating Arms Company and Colt would pay for his patents, regardless of whether they manufactured them or not, just so they could keep competitors from producing them. They had an agreement between the two, where Winchester would buy Browning's rifle designs and Colt would buy his pistol designs. Before his meeting with Hartberg, 
Some of the designs that Browning had already produced included the Winchester Model 1885, Model 1890, the Colt Browning machine gun, and the Winchester Model 1894, which by itself would go on to sell over 7 million units and become one of the most produced firearms of all time. When John Browning began talking to Hartberg, he revealed that he had invented a blowback operated semi-automatic pistol, an unusual design for the time, along with a new caliber which would be referred to as a 32 ACP. This all caught the ears of Hart. Hart would explain that FN employed expert gunsmiths and owned a modern factory with state-of-the-art machinery and equipment that sat idle. He expressed his interest in potentially manufacturing Browning's design. In the past, Browning had sold his designs and patents to either Winchester or Colt who would end up not producing them, but Browning was looking to turn this design into reality and sought to get it into production. Browning turned over his prototype to Hart, who took it to Belgium for FN to test. Upon testing, the prototype would end up firing over 500 rounds without malfunctioning, a large feat for the time. FN immediately offered Browning a contract for the right to produce his design and offered to pay him a fee of $2,000, equivalent to $62,000 today, as well as a royalty of 2 francs, or $11 per pistol sold. Browning agreed to this contract and his design began production as the Model 1899, also known as the Pistol Let Browning. This was the first ever handgun with the slide to be put into production, a feature now found common in modern handguns. This was also the first handgun ever produced by FN. The production of the Model 1899 and its upgraded version, the Model 1900, brought a resurgence to FN's firearm operations as they were able to profit immensely by placing accurate, reliable, and most importantly, affordable firepower in the hands of the common man. Around the same time, FN would venture into the automotive industry and began producing cars and motorcycles, eventually becoming one of Belgium's longest lived car makers and even longer motorcycle manufacturers. The first FN car was a twin cylinder, chain driven cart with a two speed gearbox. This sold really well for the time and about 100 were manufactured the first year. Since FN was already building bicycles at this point, they would also decide to experiment with motorcycles by retrofitting them with clip on engines. By December of 1901, they would build their first single cylinder motorcycle. In 1899, Browning had conceived one of his most challenging designs, the Auto 5, the first semi-automatic shotgun. John preferred to work with Winchester on any of his long gun designs, so he allowed them the opportunity to buy his design first. Winchester's president at the time, Thomas Bennett, was unsure how such a design would fare with the public, and even if it was successful, it would largely cut into the sales of their own popular Model 1897. Reluctantly, Thomas bought the rights to the design without any intention to produce it. Three years later, in 1902, Browning went to see Thomas again, getting him to either commit to either buying and producing his design or forfeiting the rights to it so he could sell it to another gunmaker. The meeting between the two didn't last long as Browning sought royalties for every sale of his design rather than a one-time payment that Thomas and Winchester were accustomed to paying. Thomas refused to pay any royalties to anybody and so Browning took his designs and prototype and never came back to Winchester. Browning would next decide to call Remington's president at the time, Marcellus Hartley, to see if he would be interested in the design, and they agreed to meet later in the day. As John waited in Remington's lobby to present his design, Marcellus died in his office of a heart attack mere minutes before the two were set to meet. John Browning, ever the resilient inventor, took his prototype and designs overseas to his friends at FN, where he had a pleasant experience with in the past. FN overjoyed to welcome the man that changed their fortunes were even more ecstatic when they got a chance to look at John's new design. Within a month of his arrival, John had his royalty contract that he had desired and FN owned the worldwide manufacturing and distribution rights to the Auto 5. Also part of the agreement was the stipulation that 10,000 of the Auto 5 shotguns were to be sold by John himself in the United States. John was confident in his design and in America's appetite for such a new firearm. Much like the Model 1899, and the Model 1900, success was immediate upon production and sales would hit record highs for FN, and all 10,000 of Browning's personal order would be sold within a year. Although the Model 1900 was a successful and reliable pistol, it was too small to be used on the battlefield. In 1903, FN would introduce the Browning-designed Model 1903 to hopefully attract large military contracts. The FN 1903 was marketed hard in Europe and Latin America starting in 1904 as an affordable and effective alternative to the 9mm Luger for those wanting to upgrade from a revolver to a full-size semi-automatic pistol. Several minor armies, such as that of the Netherlands, Belgium, 
Sweden, and others bought several of the Model 1903s, but the main success came from law enforcement sales to Russia, Turkey and the Ottoman Empire, and in Latin America. Sweden found that the 1903 proved to be more reliable in their Arctic conditions and ended up liking the gun so much that they put it into production as the M07 under license by Husqvarna. Between 1904 and 1942, Husqvarna in Sweden would produce about 65% of the total output of the Model 1903. Although the 1903 had moderate success, sales accounted for only about one-fifth of the amount of that of the Model 1900. However, they were still well-liked, accurate, and easy to manage. As such, they appeared in combat all throughout the first half of the 20th century in a number of strange places ranging from the Russian Civil War and the Spanish Civil War, as well as to the Finnish Winter War. In 1906, FN would begin production on their third pistol, designed by John Browning again, called the Model 1905 Vest Pocket. This was essentially a miniaturized version of the Model 1903, but with a striker to ignite the cartridge. Browning had offered the diminutive pistol to Colt as early as 1904, but they had turned him down. So he took the design to FN, who would manufacture it alongside his new 25 ACP cartridge that would be introduced with the Model 1905. This design proved to be another success and would go on to sell over 1 million units. 1905 also happened to be a great year for FN's motorcycles as they introduced the world's first production inline four-cylinder motorcycle. It held the distinction of being the world's fastest production motorcycle from 1911 to 1912, reaching a speed of up to 40 miles per hour. The motorcycle proved to be very popular upon its release and manufacturing output would increase every year during its near 20-year run. Car production for FN would also increase during this time period when FN began making larger cars under license from French automaker Rocket Schneider. By 1907, four cars a day were leaving the FN factory at Herstal. FN and John Browning would take the next step in their relationship in 1907 when Browning granted FN the exclusive rights to his name to be used as a trademark. This trademark would prohibit any other gun maker from associating their products with the reputable Browning name. FN would use the name in conjunction with their model numbers, and as a result, the name Browning came to mean semi-automatic pistol in various parts around the world. In 1909, Browning patented what would be an upgrade of the Model 1900, the Browning Model 1910. Browning had been used to producing his pistol designs by both Colt in the United States, as well as FN in Europe, but Colt decided to pass on the 1910 design, so Browning decided to patent and produce the design only in Europe. The Model 1910 did not begin production until 1912 because the 1900 was still selling well and FN was still fulfilling Belgian military contracts. When the Model 1910 finally released in 1912, it became revered as a technological advancement over the Model 1900. One major improvement of the new design over the 1900 was in the placing of the recoil spring set around the barrel assembly. This helped it to streamline the overall appearance of the gun and made for a lighter and more compact design to handle, which in turn yielded improved accuracy. It also featured three safeties and it was offered in 32 ACP as well as 380 ACP. It was also possible to switch calibers by simply changing the barrel only. The Model 1910 was easier to manufacture, disassembly was more user friendly, and it was more easily concealable. And although the 1910 was seen as a revolutionary design, its notoriety stems from an infamous incident. The Austro-Hungarian Empire had annexed Bosnia in 1908, effectively angering many of its Bosnian and Serbian residents. Many Bosnians felt a strong, nationalistic desire to have their land be united with their Serbian and Slavic brothers across the river to create one Serbian state, and many Serbians felt the same. The annexation put Europe on edge, but after some time, Europe would calm down. But the Serbians would not. A secret society named Union or Death or more popularly known as the Black Hand, was formed as an offshoot of an older Serbian nationalist group, the National Defense. The nationalist group included many top government officials and high-ranking military officers. The Black Hand continued the National Defense's work of anti-Austrian propaganda within Serbia and Bosnia. They committed acts of sabotage, espionage, and political murders. In June of 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, planned to visit Bosnia's capital, Sarajevo, to observe military maneuvers. When the Black Hand learned about this visit, they decided it would be an opportune time to assassinate him and potentially start a revolution to take back Bosnia. Although there was intelligence to suggest that traveling to Bosnia would be dangerous, Franz was determined to visit Sarajevo and shot down any notion of forgoing the trip. At about 10am on June 28, 1914, 
Franz and his wife left in their motorcade after a viewing of the planned military maneuvers and headed to City Hall to meet with the mayor and to go on a tour of Sarajevo. Franz was seated in the second car of the six-car motorcade, riding with the top folded down. As the motorcade approached the crowds of people who waited to see the Archduke, a bomb flew overhead directly right at Franz. The driver, Leopold Loika, saw the bomb coming and accelerated the car and narrowly escaped the effects of its time detonation, which instead injured bystanders nearby. They continued their journey to City Hall, where the planned visit went on as scheduled. After the visit, Franz would insist to go see the victims of the bombing at a nearby hospital before continuing on the tour of the city. Leopold was not made aware of the change in itinerary and continued down the originally planned route. When he realized that they were traveling down the same roads upon which they had been attacked on less than an hour ago, Leopold immediately hit the brakes and attempted reversing the vehicle. Their current position placed them directly five feet away from another assassin. The assassin, Gavrilo Princip, pulled out the Browning Model 1910 and shot twice at the Archduke and his wife. One bullet struck the Archduke in the neck, the other his wife in the stomach. Both would succumb to their wounds and die within the hour. Princip would be immediately apprehended and imprisoned. The Model 1910 would also be used to assassinate Paul Daumer, the President of France in 1932, as well as in the assassination of Huey Long, the Governor of Louisiana, in 1935. Exactly one month later, on July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary, with the support of Germany, would declare war on Serbia and World War I would break out. On August 3, 1914, Germany declared war on France. Belgium had made it known that they planned to remain neutral and denied passage for German forces to pass through to the French border. A day later, Germany would invade Belgium. It's interesting to note that the invasion of Belgium by Germany was a direct violation of the Treaty of London in which Germany, Great Britain, and France were bound to respect and defend the neutrality of Belgium. As a result of the violation, Britain would declare war on Germany. Because Belgium was not a part of this new conflict, the FN factory had to be shut down and halt production for the duration of the war. By August 7th, Germany had overrun many bordering cities, including Herstal, and would later occupy most of Belgium as the war raged on. John Browning would return to the United States and develop new firearms for the army, while Europe would rapidly descend into chaos.